This next story is for those who do plan on spending more time outdoors now that we've got some warm weather in the forecast. But cases of Lyme disease in Canada are dramatically rising as tick populations grow and expand. That's according to Canadian health officials who are now urging the public to take proper precaution this summer. We thought this would be a good time to bring in CTV's medical contributor, Dr. Marla Shapiro. Dr. Marla, good to have you in the studio. Good morning. How bad is it getting when it comes to Lyme disease in Canada? Well, the actual number of cases still are relatively small, but we've seen an increase. In 2016, it was just under 1,000 cases that were reported, mm -hmm. about 3 per 100,000 people. But with warm weather shifts, we are seeing a change in the population of these ticks that can cause Lyme disease. And prevention is important to understand. I think one of the most important things is to know whether or not Lyme is in your area. And the best way to do that is by looking at the Health Canada website that has maps of where we're likely to see it because it's not equally distributed across the country. Because not every tick carries Lyme disease. Absolutely. You remember that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Talk about some of the symptoms, though. How do you know if you have Lyme? So it depends where in the course of Lyme disease. We talk about early Lyme disease, and that's typically within the first 30 days. And then we talk about longer and then disseminated and those who are left with long-term treatments. But typically, we get fever and chills, headache. You may get a stiff neck, muscle and joint pains, fatigue. And about 70% of people will get this classic rash that looks like a bullseye. But somewhere between 20 to 30% may not get that rash at all, which wow. we said we tend to think of that as the hallmark of Lyme. It's not you, in everybody. Well, OK, and we're showing a good picture of it mm -hmm. right there. But you're right. Like, I had some of those symptoms last week. I thought I was coming down with the flu. Like, you don't want to panic people. I'm no. pretty sure I don't have Lyme disease. But what happens if Lyme disease doesn't go treated? So if it doesn't get treated early on, then it can go on to disseminate the disease, both early and then later stages. And that, that has to do with the disease now becoming blood-borne, so it can land in almost any organ that we think of. Yes. We typically think about Lyme arthritis, but you can get Lyme carditis, meaning cardiac disease, neurological symptoms, really depends along the course of it. Wow. Okay. Trying not to be a hypochondriac here, but I have a little <laughs> cough, so I'm kind of worried. No, the cough, the cough typically good? is not what okay, we see, not Whew. typically. How do we avoid? Bites. So and that's, our pets too. That's a thing, right? That is the most important question. Yeah. Having an awareness of whether or not it's endemic in your area and what you can do. So if you're going to, out into wooded areas, remember that you transmit Lyme by brushing up against this. So you want to stay in paths that don't have all these bushes. So wear long pants, wear long sleeves, light colored clothing. Insect repellent, really important on your children and yourself, an age-appropriate insect repellent with the appropriate amount of DEET in it. Remembering to shower to remove ticks before they become attached. Mm. And you want to do a full body check and your head as well, particularly groin, armpits, moist areas are where Lyme likes to go. You want to check your children as well. Remembering that often in the nymph stage, these can be very, very, very small and somewhat difficult to spot. Right. Um... I was hiking in the woods this weekend. <laughs> I have all these ticks <laughs> or check marks that I'm looking at, um, but I didn't see any ticks. And I'm not in an area where there, there are ticks at this point, right? So, so that's the key. I think knowing that, and if you do see a tick, understanding how to remove it. How do you remove them? So there's only one way to remove it. It's with a tweezer that okay. you grasp and do a firm upward stroke. Okay. Some people will think about putting Vaseline on the area to make it uh, a softer emollient, and then that's a wrong thing to do that can help facilitate the spread. Yes. So you want to grasp firmly with the tweezers, pull out, dispose of it, and dispose of the tick itself. Yeah. Um, if you're concerned about infectivity, yeah. typically the tick has to be attached for about 24 to 36 hours before it spreads the disease. Okay. And we can use preventive treatment within 72 hours after the tick has been removed. Wow. Bottom line, no, if this is a concern in your area. Absolutely. Great stuff. Appreciate the advice. Thanks, Dr. Marlon. CTV's medical contributor, Dr. Marla Shapiro.